What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the Emma Gardner channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how we process up our tomato seeds. This is something that we're doing on a large scale. A lot of you wanna know how we do it for commercial production, but the same method applies to home production. So you can take all of these methods and scale them down so that you can learn how to save your own tomato seeds. Now, the process that you're seeing right here is the final stages. The first part of this is basically just the fermentation stage. You see, every tomato has a seed coating. It's that kind of slimy uh, coating around the seed that makes it slippery. And you need to get that off in order to have high quality seed because that actually acts as a sprout inhibitor. And it also um, kind of makes it really difficult to properly save the seeds and, and get clean seed. So what we're doing here is we're fermenting. But rewind about maybe a week ago or so, four to five days ago, we took all of the tomatoes and we just squeezed them into a bucket. Now there's no meat in these buckets. It's basically the tomato gel, the juice, and the seeds. There are some chunks of tomato that occasionally will fall in, but you don't want any of the big hunks of flesh. You wanna discard those. You can use those for your cooking. You know, you can stew those down, turn them into sauce, whatever, but all of the insides go into the bucket. And then whatever we have, if it's a cup of tomatoes, a uh, cup of uh, you know tomato seeds and gel and stuff like that, we'll add one cup of water. If it's a gallon of tomato seeds, gel, and you know whatever, we'll add a gallon of water. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. No matter how much you're doing, you're adding a one-to-one -one ratio so that it can ferment. And then what happens is as it ferments, it's going to start to mold. Now you'll notice here this is a giant bucket of giant crimson that I have diluted with water and broken up the mold. But if you're looking down here, this is our Valencia. You see this nice little uh, this nice little pad of mold forming on top. That's actually important to have. It seems really gross. It does have a kind of a funky smell. It smells like kind of like tomato wine. But the mold is really important because that's actually breaking down all the other remains of the tomato skin, any you know any junk and stuff that fell in there. It's actually breaking that down, and it's also degrading the uh, the gel around the seeds. So what we did is, like I said, we already kind of broke this one up, but I'll show you with this Valencia here, what we're gonna do. So we take the mold and all, and then we take some water. You can do this in a sink. We break up that mold. You wanna break it up really fine. So we're gonna break that up. Once the mold is all broken up, you wanna let this sit. Okay, also, you wanna let the mold sit for about two days. So five days ago, we squeezed the tomatoes in. About two and a half days in, the mold started to form. And then this is kind of like day five. So um, the total process is actually not that long. You don't want to let it go too long either because if it molds too long and it over ferments, it's actually gonna ruin the viability of the seeds. So now that we've broken that all up, this is where the magic happens, you guys. This is crazy. So all we're going to do is we're going to dump. Now we're going to, we're gonna slowly pour this off. And what you'll notice, look at that color by the way, holy cow. What you'll notice is that if you pour slowly, only the stuff that is light and stuff that you don't want is going to come to the surface and it's going to get poured off. Things like the mold, things like inviable seeds, things like pulp, anything like that is going to get uh, basically discarded and what you want is you want the seeds at the bottom and that's exactly why we add the water so that as it ferments the seeds sink down to the bottom and now we're going to be very careful here to not pour down too much but check that out it is that simple to save tomato seeds you guys it's so simple now these are all heirloom varieties you can save hybrid varieties as well hybrids are a cross between two heirloom varieties so you may end up with something that you don't expect you may end up with something that's unpredictable heirlooms breed true to type and so these are all heirlooms and heirlooms have been saved for many 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 years now we're just gonna add a little bit more water we're gonna do the process all over again and we're basically gonna keep refining this down until it's nice and clean So that's after two washes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump it into a sieve. We're gonna dump it into a sieve so that we can get it nice and dry. I don't want a bunch of water in here. I want it as dry as possible. 
So we're gonna we're gonna get it nice and liquid. We're going to dump it into a into a kitchen sieve. Get the rest out of there. And this, like I said, this is commercial uh, quantities of seed. This is not for like you know. I mean, you can save this many seeds as a home gardener, but this is probably close to seven to 10,000 seeds. So this is a lot of seeds in here. We're gonna get this as dry as possible. And then all we're going to do is we're simply gonna put it into a bucket and we're gonna take it inside. So we have to remember what this is. We're gonna mark it, it's Valencia. And then after we do that, we're gonna take it inside and uh, I'm gonna show you the final step, which is just getting it ready to dry. This is one of the giant crimsons. These are the giant crimson tomatoes that we, uh, we just got done processing up. There's a second bucket of giant crimsons and this process could not be simpler. It is just basically using age old techniques that people have used. So there's uh, a process called winnowing and winnowing, they use the wind. The wind will blow the chaff and any plant remains away. And, uh, and then the seed, which is heavier, is going to fall straight down. And so they would, they would fan it or they would put a, you know, modern day techniques would be put a fan, uh, putting a fan to blow the chaff away or waiting for a windy day or something like that. But when it comes to seeds that need to be fermented, things like tomato seeds, this is known as wet winnowing. And wet winnowing is just using the, using gravity to pull down the more dense, heavy seeds down to the bottom and discarding the rest. It's the exact same process. So I'm gonna show you what the, uh, what the giant crimson looks like. Check this out. All right, now remember, it's really important to agitate because when you agitate, it's going to make sure that anything that's in suspension is gonna settle. Sometimes you'll notice that the seeds will get trapped in kind of a layer of, of mold or a layer of gel and stuff that's kind of semi-fermented. You wanna make sure you agitate it to get that all to settle out. Once you get that settled out, wait about five, 10 seconds, settles out pretty quick. Then we're simply gonna start dumping. And from this bucket right here, we should yield roughly about dry weight I would guess between two and four ounces of tomato seed. That's a lot of tomato seed. All right, because there's so much seed in here, I don't wanna dump too much too fast. And like I said, you can do this in a kitchen sink. You can do this on a super small scale with one tomato's worth of seeds, all the way up to, you know, a full five gallon bucket worth of seeds. We're getting really close, look at that. Look at all the seeds in there. That is absolutely crazy. I love tomato seeds. One of my favorite seeds to save. One more, uh, one more fill up and we should be good to pretty much just start to, start to siphon these off. All right, so now we're letting it settle for about five, 10 seconds. Once it's settled out, we can dump. Start to see those seeds come into the, come into the front there. Well, we're good. So then all we're going to do is get our sieve. There's probably more, probably more seeds in here that can fit in the sieve, but we'll do it in multiple, multiple uh, dumps. But Ah, there we go. Oh, psych. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there's a lot of seed in there. Get that as dry as possible. That's more giant crimson. And All right, so the final step that we have to do is just get it ready to dry. So we have some wax paper. It's highly recommended you go with wax paper because uh, parchment paper will kind of turn soggy. This actually will help the seeds to release from the paper when the drying process is done. Now, I'm probably gonna need more than this because I've got my Valencia here, which is, uh, it's got a, lot of, got a lot of seeds in it. And what you wanna do is just basically sprinkle this 
as lightly as possible over the surface of the wax paper so that you don't have too big of clumps. Now, clumps are inevitable. You're gonna get, you are gonna get some clumps, but you wanna spread those clumps out so that they're no, really no bigger than maybe like, uh, like the size of a dime. Just kind of spread them out. And, um, and then obviously have them in a well-ventilated area. Cool, dark, and dry is best because that's gonna help them to, uh, to dry out, but also kind of uh, stay viable. Warm weather really is not great for, for seed viability. So keep them cool, dark, and dry. And then when these are totally dry, we're gonna follow up uh, with these in probably, I'd say like five to seven days. We're gonna follow up and uh, we're gonna put them in storage. So in about five to seven days, these are gonna be bone dry. You wanna let them be completely dry. And these little clusters, these little clumps have, will have clumped together and dried together. So you'll just need to take your finger and kind of roll them around to break them up and they'll break right up. You'll notice they'll have no problem crumbling and, um, and then you can put them in your baggie and keep them cool, dark and dry. And these should stay fresh for between two to five years. So um, obviously the sooner you use them, the better, but you've got lots of seeds here to grow for next year's garden give to a friend or family, or even, heck, make a little side income and sell them. All right, and so there you go. There is how to save tomato seeds. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you wanna learn uh, more about saving seeds, like I said, uh, we have a seed saving blog on our website. We have a seed saving playlist on how to save other seeds, things like cucumbers, uh, broccoli, kale, lettuce, uh, different herbs. So if you're interested in saving more different kinds of seeds, check out that playlist. I'll try to remember to link them in the uh, description box down below. But as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you guys later. See ya.